Hi, I'm Meredith Hartley from Me Squared Solutions, and I'm going to explain variation and Nelson's funnel experiment to you today. This is part of the Certified Quality Improvement Associate prep course for the American Society for Quality exam, and we base our courses off of the Quality Council of Indiana's material. There will always be variation. Variation is any differentiation or change or deviation from a norm. The key question shouldn't be, why is this variation happening? Oh no, we have variation, what should we do? It should be, is this variation normal for the process or is something weird happening? And we really need to do something because this is a problem. Variation is broken into two different categories. There's common variation and special variation. Common variation is stuff you expect to happen. It's normal human error or a normal part of the system. It's the example we have is your commute is going to vary every day because traffic lights are going to be a little bit different and weather is going to change. That's normal variation. You expect that to happen. You might speed up a little, you might slow down, totally normal. Special variation is the unexpected. It's not typical. It's an anomaly or a sign that something's broken. For instance, getting in a car accident or having your car break down on you on your way to work changes the length of your commute because it's a special cause of variation. It's something that's abnormal. You didn't expect it to happen. Most common cause variation is totally harmless. You expect it to happen, and you need to accept that that's always going to be a part of your process. It's impossible to eliminate all variation. You just have to have healthy variation. The only time that common cause variation becomes unhealthy is if there's too much of it, and it makes the system unstable. For example, it's okay to be late, just a couple minutes late to work. Say your commute varies by one or two minutes, and that's no big deal. But if you're the manager of a company and you realize that all of your employees are getting to late to school, sorry, getting to work um, half an hour to 15 minutes to 45 minutes late because the city has grown so much, traffic has gotten so bad, that's a case where common cause variation has become a problem. And in this case, the employer might decide to start offering bus passes or subway passes because they know that that will take the strain off their workers. They won't have to stress about driving into work anymore. It'll make it affordable and they'll be able to get to work dependably because those buses and those trains go on a pretty solid schedule. That's an example of healthily addressing common cause variation when it gets to be too out of control. Special cause variation requires two responses. It's usually a problem that needs an immediate response, and then you have to make a long-term change to the system to prevent it from happening again. And the example we use here is that your car breaks down on the way to work, probably because you forgot to change the oil. Immediately, you have to call a tow truck and get a ride to work. That's the immediate change you need to make to address that special cause variation. But in the long term, you probably need to schedule regular maintenance and change your system for taking care of your car to make sure that doesn't happen again. That's a case of unhealthy special cause variation that needs that kind of, of addressing. Now, special cause variation isn't always bad. Sometimes you discover something awesome. Maybe there's construction on the way to work, so you discover a detour that actually gets you to work faster. That's a special cause that actually had a positive effect and you want to understand it so you can duplicate it. So not all special cause variation is bad. Quality gets worse when managers change the system unnecessarily for common cause variation. So for that harmless, normal human error that you expect, that's the humans changing or the system being slightly different, the machine needing a little more oil, that kind of stuff. That's harmless common cause variation and you shouldn't change things because of it. Lloyd S. Nelson was a statistician, he died just last year, and he came up with an experiment to show managers how they were actually making quality worse every time they changed the system unnecessarily. And what he had them do is they took a funnel, like the one that you'll see here on your screen, and they dropped a marble into the funnel and let it fall on a piece of paper where it would make a mark. And they were supposed to aim the funnel over a target. So they'd put the funnel, oh, let's go back a second, they would put the funnel right over this target right here, and then they'd drop the marble and let it leave a mark. And the idea was you do this over and over again until you ended up with a chart that looked a lot like this, with a lot of little marks all around the target. 
use this to show that's normal variation. It's going to happen. Most of the marks are going to be relatively close together. That's normal, regular human variation. Nelson used this to identify four rules for how human beings respond to harmless change and end up hurting quality. There are these four cases. This is from the uh, Quality Council of Indiana's CQIA primer. And I'm going to go through each one and explain them to you. In case one, the variation just happens. You don't change anything. It, you just keep dropping those marbles. And the results stay pretty much the same. They're pretty close to the target. You can predict that a drop is going to be within this area. That's a stable system. The results are predictable. In case two, the idea was that every time a mark wasn't perfectly on target, you take that funnel and you'd move it an equal distance in the opposite direction. So every time that you dropped a marble here, you'd say, oh dear, I'm too far away from the mark. Let me try moving it over this direction. Maybe then I'll hit the mark. And then when you don't, you move it the opposite direction and the opposite direction over and over again, constantly trying to hit that mark. And when that happens, the amount of variation increases about 40% he founds. You're actually making the situation worse by overcorrecting. In case three, the idea was that he saw people put the funnel over the target again. So they would accidentally hit right here and they'd re-aim for that target right in the middle. But then they'd have a second, a second thought. They'd second guess themselves. And they do exactly what number two did. They would overcorrect and move the funnel over here. And what happens is the results keep getting further and further apart and more and more unpredictable. In these cases, variation gets progressively worse and unpredictable because you're overcorrecting instead of aiming for the target. In case number four, he noticed that people, instead of trying to aim for the target, started aiming for their last drop. So each time they dropped something here, which was pretty close to the target, instead of re-aiming for the very center, they'd aim for the last dot, and they'd get a little further off. And then they'd aim for the next, for that dot, and they'd get a little further off, and a little further off, until they got progressively farther and farther away from the target. Now, real world, world examples of these would be um, in case two, where they kept getting just slightly farther away and were unpredictable. This would be if a factory adjusted their machinery every time there was any variation in the process. If every time there was a dissatisfied customer, they changed the entire system. If every time there was an electrical surge, you completely tried to rewire or did an audit and tried to fix the system. Normal variation is normal variation. If you change the system, you're actually introducing more variation into the system. An example of case number four would be if instead of every time a factory made a product, instead of comparing it to the original product they were trying to make more of, they compared it to the last one and the last one and the last one. Think of it like a telephone game. Instead of going back to the source every time and comparing what you've done to the source, you're comparing it to what the last person told you and the last person told them. And those mistakes get magnified. That's what you can see, excuse me, in this chart right here. You can see that they get farther and farther away from the target each time. Another example um, is this happens when a, a poorly trained worker is given responsibility to train a new employee. And they pass on their mistakes that were never caught. And then those get magnified as the next employee makes mistakes. And then they pass all of those on to the next employee and the next employee. When management doesn't get involved and doesn't remind people what needs to happen and take responsibility for training people, quality suffers. In all of these cases, quality got worse because they adjusted a stable process unnecessarily. That's the real point of Nelson's funnel experiment. Deming called this tampering, where normal variation over here in case one, is treated like special cause variation, as if there's something major happening and we have to change everything. The importance for the CQIA exam is to understand what Nelson's funnel experiment was proving, which is human behavior with common cause variation, how unnecessary changes hurt quality. That's the most important thing to know for the exam. Also to know what each of these graphs are an example of that case two is an example of someone adjusting 
to try to compensate for being a little bit off, and each time moving a distance away from the target, that case three is overcompensating, and case four is comparing your current result to the last result instead of to the standard that you want to achieve.